Hey, welcome back to Big Balls Garage. We're going to do a review on the Norcold NR740BB. This is a more or less an RV fridge and it's dual voltage, 120, 12 volt. And it's actually a nice compact little unit. It's black. This is the interior. It's about 1.7 cubic feet. Plenty of room in there. We also have a fridge section up on the top. If you want to keep anything really frozen. It's got a nice blue light for nighttime camping. This is great. It doesn't not white in your face or anything. It's not yellow or you can't see anything. It's actually a nice blend. Anyways, this fridge here, we have this removable drawer or tray, which you can raise up here, depending on what you decide to use for this. When you do this, you get more room down here on the bottom so that when you close the door, it's actually won't be squished. Or if you want to put your wine bottles in here or whatever else, but you notice you will lose that space in the back as it closes. Uh, there's a temperature controller in the back. And basically you can just dial it in. I usually keep it around 2. 2 seems to be about normal fridge. I don't think you need to keep it any higher than that, otherwise stuff will start to freeze. Like I said, this unit is 120 12 volts. So what happens is that as soon as it's plugged in at 120, she'll stay running on 120. Once you lose the 120, it'll go to 12 volt DC. We've run this on 12 volt DC for about four and a half hours on a trip with the door closed on the trailer and it actually maintained it with the solar panel just charging up or topping up the batteries. So I don't think you're going to have an issue with uh, it using too much power. This is what they call a compressor style fridge, which is one of those uh, compressors like an air conditioner. It's not the absorption type, which uses a little bit more hydro and is less efficient. So if you ever decide to get an RV fridge, you put in your camper or inside a trailer, you make sure it's a compressor, not the other ones. They kind of lack the performance and the efficiency of it. This compressor is actually super quiet. It, you wouldn't be able to tell that it comes on. As you can hear, it just started up. That's the compressor and that is the fan. So what happens with this is this doesn't have to be in an open area where you have to keep the sides and the back open. This actually breathes through the bottom of the unit where it'll suck the air in and suck the air out via fan to keep the compressor nice and cool. This model here also will shut off at about 100 degrees uh, Celsius, which is probably around what, 212 Fahrenheit. It's a protection for the compressor in case it gets too hot. And then it'll restart once the, pre the uh, temperatures have dropped. Uh, simple little installation. Basically, you can reverse the door. If you want to open it to the right, to the left, you just have to undo the screws here and just reverse the door like any other fridge in anybody's home. Um, Basically, this one I have just set up for recessed, and it comes with these little brackets here that kind of allow you to screw it into the side so you don't have it too much out the front. But you could move that bracket towards the front, it's just I decided not to because of the uh, limitation of space here. Plus I like the way it looks. This panel here in the front is black, but you can pull this panel off and grab a piece of stainless if you wanted and just dump it in there and it would be a stainless fridge, stainless and black, depending on what your decor is. Um, I've used this probably for about six months. Never had an issue with it. Everything just stays a certain temperature. First time I used it, we kind of froze everything because I didn't know number three meant it was going to get super cold. But other than that, easy to clean. Defrost tray is also in here. But you'll have a defrost tray at the end. Make sure you wipe it out so you don't get mold growth. We also keep one of these temperatures here because the dial doesn't really tell me much. That's the only drawback. I wish it would have been a digital display. But we just keep that in there to see the temperature of the food. So we kind of match the fridge at home. And as I can see, there's the thermostat in the back. This is also removable if you decide not to use this. If you have any big items, you basically pop that piece out right here via this. And now you got plenty of room for any high items you want to store in there. And go back in, it's just the same, just as easy, just slide it back in there. 
pop it down there, get your finger in there, and snap it into place like so. And now it's just secure. What this does is that allow another compartment down here. It's not going to get so cold. Up here will be a little bit uh, cooler. And then, of course, the freezer will be the ultimate coldness. Other than that, these are available online. You can buy them anywhere. Amazon, you can buy them at the RV dealers. The problem now we're having is supply and demand. And I guess there's not enough uh, supply out there compared to the demand. Uh, the only th other thing I'd like to touch on is the compressor. If you decide to buy an RV fridge, make sure it's, it's got a compressor. The actually better performance. Now, I did install this in a 2021 uh, UCAMP tag. And uh, for you guys deciding to do that, I just had to raise this piece up here about three quarters. It's actually a little less than three quarters of an inch because I didn't want it sticking up too high. Otherwise, I'd lose the height here. And at the bottom, I had to maintain this piece of plywood or that came with the unit. It used to be up about two inches. So I've cut it back down to the bottom and then I've back scored the plywood just so I have a flat. So everything back here is flat. The only reason I did that is if you're planning on putting this in your RV or your tag, if you notice the clearance down here, I have plenty of clearance. Without that piece, I would actually be rubbing on it. So, and I didn't, like I said, I didn't want it so high, but I do have a little bit of clearance. This unit doesn't require any, any extra ventilation as, like I said before, the ventilation is down here on the bottom. So it's actually pretty clean. Well, if you decide to get one of these, you won't regret it. Thanks for watching Big Balls Garage.